In this video, I'll be talking about coronavirus disease 2019 and multiple sclerosis. If you'd like to better understand how coronavirus might impact people with MS, don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel. And make sure to ring that notifications bell to be alerted every time I upload a new video. I've recently been asked a lot of questions about coronavirus disease 2019, or COVID-19, and how it might impact people with MS. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my understanding of the disease and my opinions about exactly those questions. A couple quick disclaimers. What I provide on this YouTube channel is not medical advice. I can't treat or diagnose you on the interwebs. What I'm doing is providing medical education and information for you, and I'm sharing my opinion. Now, of course, you have to talk to your medical provider about what's right for you. And nothing I say on this channel trumps that. Secondly, most of the information that I've collected today that's part of this presentation, I got on the CDC website and also on the World Health Organization website. And I'll make sure to include links to both of those resources in the description down below. The disease COVID-19 is caused by a virus that's newly discovered. So they call it novel. It's in the family of viruses called coronaviruses. Now, coronaviruses is a very large family, so there's lots of different kinds of coronaviruses. And some of them are very well known to us. There are coronaviruses that commonly infect humans and cause uh, mild flu-like symptoms, like having the common cold. There are other coronaviruses that only infect animals, and they don't really infect humans. Very rarely, a virus like a coronavirus that infects an animal can jump species and infect a human, and that's called zoonotic infection. And we think that this novel coronavirus, which is causing COVID-19, was that. It was a coronavirus that jumped into the human species. This novel coronavirus is thought to be a, related to the SARS-associated coronavirus, which caused an outbreak in the early 2000s. But it's important to understand it's not the same virus. They just think they might be related. And now for the question of the day. Which is not a best practice for people in the United States? Number one sanitize or wash your hands frequently. Number two, stay home if you're sick and avoid sick contacts. Number three, sanitize frequently touched surfaces. Number four, wear a face mask in public. Number five, cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue and then throw out the tissue. Make sure to jot down your response and stay tuned to the end of the video to find out the answer. Now, according to the CDC website, symptoms of COVID-19 range from very mild flu-like symptoms all the way to severe symptoms with death. Common symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And the onset of symptoms typically lags between two and 14 days after exposure. It does appear that the very young and the very old and those with other medical conditions are at higher risk compared to the general population. How is COVID-19 transmitted between people? There's really three ways. Number one, person-to-person -person contact through respiratory droplets. So you cough or you sneeze, and the virus is spewed out of your mouth or nose, and it hits someone's eyes, nose, or mouth, and they swallow it, and it gets into their body, and they become infected. So through person-to-person -person droplet transmission. The second way is thought to be through close personal contact, touching, shaking hands, physically interacting with someone who's currently infected, and then touching our eyes, nose, or mouth. And the third is that it's possible that we might be able to pick up COVID-19 from touching surfaces where the virus is currently living, and then touching our eyes, nose, or mouth. The following is the CDC's recommendation for the general population as it relates to preventing infection, such as viruses, including COVID-19. Number one, sanitize your hands. Use an alcohol-based sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol content, and do that often. Do that after you sneeze or cough. Do that after going to the bathroom. Do that before eating. This is really important. It's also okay to use soap and water, but if you use soap and water, make sure to scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. 
Also, if your hands are visibly soiled, like you can see dirt on them, you don't want to use sanitizer, you want to use soap and water. Number two, you want to cough and sneeze into a tissue. I'm not recommending covering with your hands or with your elbow. I'm recommending using a tissue Kleenex, coughing or sneezing into it, and then throwing that Kleenex into the trash can and then washing your hands. That's the best practice. Number three, if you're sick, stay at home. If you're sick and you might be able to infect somebody else, we can prevent that simply by staying home as a good chaperone of society and to prevent others from becoming ill. If you're sick, stay at home. Number four is to avoid sick contacts. So if you know someone is currently ill, don't visit them at home if it's at all possible. Number five is to disinfect surfaces in your house, in your office, what have you, which are, are frequently touched. And you don't need to use special magical or, or expensive disinfectants. You can literally use regular household sprays or wipes, and that's okay to kill viruses. Number six, you want to maintain a fit and healthy lifestyle because the healthier you are as a person, the better you're going to individually handle an infection or a viral attack. Now, as it relates to the question of face masks, the general public is not recommended to wear face masks. If you know that you have an infection with a virus, so if you have tested positive for COVID-19, you're going to want to wear a mask in public. Or if you're currently suspected, then you're going to want to wear a mask. But wearing a mask in public is not currently a CDC recommendation for the general population. Of course, many people watching this video might be specifically interested in what we recommend as it relates to folks with MS. So let me take a crack at answering that. I want to remind you, I'm giving you my opinions, which doesn't make me right. It just makes me opinionated. Having multiple sclerosis in and of itself probably doesn't increase your risk to get a viral infection compared to the general population. However, the MS medicines have a range of different mechanisms of action. They work differently. Some of them alter the immune response and are considered immunomodulatory, and others suppress the immune response, and they're called immunosuppressants. And as it relates to concern for increased risk of infection, the immunomodulatory drugs are generally less of a concern compared to the immunosuppressants. But wait, the immunosuppressants in MS are very, very specific. So they don't typically ubiquitously drop the immune response. They're rather targeted. And so that makes this entire conversation much more complicated because you can't use just common thoughts about old school chemo when thinking about these new MS biologic agents. In reality, we need to think about each agent individually and we need to think about that individual person. So it's a, it's a bit complex. To add yet another layer of complexity, there's other factors that we have to consider, like what is your exposure risk? Are you a healthcare provider? Do you deliver healthcare? And therefore you have a lot of sick contacts. Do you travel? Um, are you going to Italy? Are you going to China where there's uh, an epidemic currently or not? What is your age? Older people are at increased risk compared to younger people. And so again, there's a lot of factors that we have to consider to provide the right answer for you. To share my opinions, People with MS that are taking injection therapy with interferons or with a glutamor acetate, Cupaxone, or who are taking the oral pill uh, Abagio are probably not at significant increased risk of contracting an infection because we've modulated the immune response. We haven't suppressed it. Now, on the other hand, there are certain MS medicines like Limtrada, Ocrevus, Tysabri, Jolinia, Saponamod, or mavenclad, these are medicines that in some way, shape, or form suppress the immune response. And they could have a situation for a person where there's an increased risk of infection. It's super complicated because just because you're on one of those medicines doesn't mean you're currently at risk because some of it has to do with the timing of the medicine and the dosing. So the bottom line is if you're someone with multiple sclerosis and you're receiving an MS medication, a best practice is to ask your provider if your situation places you specifically at increased risk or not. Now, currently in the United States, and I'm making this video in February 2020, there isn't an epidemic here in the United States. And so our recommendations for what we would offer or suggest in the United States is very different than what you might recommend in endemic areas. I'll give you an example. I recently read a blog post where some MS neurologists in Italy 
were sharing that they are backing away from redosing certain MS medicines to their MS population. But keep in mind, currently there is an epidemic of COVID-19 in Italy. We don't have the same situation in the United States. And so the recommendations for American MS patients is going to be different. It bears mentioning that influenza A, the flu, is seen at a much higher rate than COVID-19. And I am very, very concerned about protecting my patients against flu. And so generally speaking, it is a good idea for people with MS to have a flu shot. And of course, there are special considerations depending on which MS medicines you're on. And so I would always recommend asking the MS provider, is it safe presently for me to get a flu shot or not? And that's uh, an important step to take. We don't want to forget about influenza in the setting of concern of COVID-19. And now to answer the question of the day, which is not a best practice for people in the United States? Let's walk through the answers. Answer one is incorrect. We absolutely do want people to sanitize and wash their hands frequently. It's especially an important idea to do this after going to the bathroom, before eating, or after coughing or sneezing. Number two is also incorrect. We do want people who are sick to stay home, and we want you to avoid sick contacts when possible. Answer number three is also incorrect because it is a best practice to sanitize surfaces that are frequently touched. Answer five is also incorrect because we think it's a best recommendation to cover your mouth and nose when you cough and sneeze. Ideally, you want to sneeze into a tissue, throw the tissue out, and then wash your hands. The correct answer of the day which is not a best practice for people in the United States, is to wear a face mask in public. In other words, we do not recommend that the general population wear face masks in public. There are situations where someone specifically with MS on a specific medicine might find that to be a best practice when traveling. But again, this is very specific for that person. And you're gonna to need to talk to your MS provider to find out if that applies to you. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. If you're impacted by MS and you wanna up your game, check out this playlist right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love that video right there, so check that out. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click the circle with my face in it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.